Today, I come to you from the city of Washington, Missouri, the Gary Lucy Gallery, and the home of the Two-Headed Dragon. I'm Rick J, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. I'd like to welcome you to the gallery this morning and uh, we'll share a few things while we're here. One of the things I wanted to share with you is uh, my little pet project, my two-headed dragon. About 30 years ago, I uh, was faced with, uh, oh, a palette with leftover paint after about four or five working days and uh, I started throwing it in the wastebasket, but I thought, no, I'll just fill up a coffee can down here. And about a year later, that coffee can was filled, filled up. And then the next, I got another coffee can and filled it up. That took about two years. And then I made an arch between the two. And then I started up and, and said, well, there's going to be, a, I think a head grows out of that, you see. So from here to here is about seven or eight years. And uh, it, I left the studio one weekend and uh, came back and the head was laying on the floor. It had got very warm in here and uh, it slid off and made quite the mess. So after that, all my paint brushes that I've worn out, I've stuck in here and stuck in there. So there are probably 70 or 80 paint brushes in here as armatures to hold all this up. It weighs about uh, 140 pounds, maybe 150 pounds. Oil paint is very heavy. And uh, uh, I have lots of school kids that come in and out, and they love the two-headed dragon, and we try to add a little paint to it for them and that sort of thing. And, but the kiddo said, it's got to have wings. And I said, I never thought about a dragon having wings, but you know kids, they're really into wings and dragons. So this is about three years for this wing and three years for that wing and so forth. Uh, uh, of all the paintings that I've done, probably this is going to be the most famous thing that I've ever done. So, the two-headed dragon. Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to take a minute to uh, share a piece of work that I just completed. Uh, I've been painting now for professionally for about 50 years and in that 50 year period of time I don't know that I've actually done a piece of work for myself. This one I did for myself. Uh, this is a piece of work dedicated to the history of law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement is an interesting thing. All civil societies generally uh, make a lot of laws. I mean, we go back 3,500 years or so, we'll see laws are made. But unless there's an entity that enforces those laws, the laws are worthless as far as that's concerned. This is an 1876 sheriff. Sort of the Wild West, if you will. There were laws, but if there was no one with the power and the will to enforce them, Obviously, we had a very lawless society. Um, the piece of work, this is actually a friend of mine who modeled for me. His name is Mike McZook, and he is in New Haven. Uh, he, Mike is not into the arts. He's actually into trucking. But uh, he's modeled for me for this particular piece of work. The title of the piece, if I can remember it, it's the longest title I've ever given to a piece of work, is um, Great... American valor based on the spirit of rugged individualism and personal responsibility. I know it's a long one, but why not? It's my painting, you see. But I think it expresses uh, a, a situation, even today, we, we look at how law enforcement has been 
put on the back burner, so to speak, and we can see exactly what happens when law enforcement is uh, compromised. Uh, the veneer of civility vanishes quite quickly. So I've tried to capture just in the look of the piece and in sincerity that, yes, law enforcement is very important and uh, we must have it maintained. It's dedicated to our thin blue line. I want to point out, if you can kind of come in, there's interesting, the badge that he has here is the same badge that Wyatt Earp wore in Tombstone. And uh, the jewelry that's on the end of the watch chain has a thin blue line in it. I'm going to unveil this piece of work uh, down at the coffee shop with the coffee shop boys, and our chief of police is going to unveil it. And there'll be several officers there, and uh, our former county sheriff will be there and so forth. So it should be an interesting uh, uh, event. You know, you, you, as an artist, as an artist, if you're going to survive as an artist, you're going to have to pay the bills. I mean, you know, if, if mom and daddy has a lot of money or, you know, your husband or wife has a lot of money or whatever the case might be, or you get nice grants and so forth. But if you do it like I've had to do it, you have to sell the work. And I've always been focused on, well, okay, how can I market this piece? How can this piece be marketed and so forth? And you do little things for yourself. But this is the first time I ever sat down at the easel uh, and said, this is for me. And uh, a friend of mine uh, collects uh, very fine uh, firearms. And he loaned me this Henry rifle, which is a very special rifle right there. It's, uh, uh, oh, if you can tell, see the woodwork and all of the, the brass and that sort of thing. And then he, he this is an accurate reproduction of a single action uh, firearm, a single action 45 caliber pistol of the period. So therefore, everything of this is uh, accurate. I tried to get the look on Mikey's face here. We call him Mikey. Uh, I tried to get a look on his face like, I mean business, but I will work with you. So it's an interesting piece. I'd like to welcome you to the gallery and uh, share the work with you and so forth, especially the piece over my shoulder. The title of the piece is Eating Up the Lights. It has to do with navigational uh, mechanisms uh, of the perhaps 1856 variety on the rivers or inland waterways. It's kind of a signature piece for me. It's been one of the most recognizable pieces that I've ever done. And uh, uh, like, for instance, we just got it back and hung in the governor's mansion for about six months uh, until I finished another piece that hangs there now. But uh, eating up the lights, it's a special piece. Uh, stop by the gallery and uh, see it. We, we have that and several other large originals on display here. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, coming to you from the Gary Lucy Gallery in Washington, Missouri. Join me, if you would, in welcoming back our fourth visit with artist Mr. Gary Lucy. Thanks, uh, Gary, again, um, for inviting me back. I'm truly excited to, uh, again, turn the spotlight on you. Well, thank you very much. It's been very good to be here with you. Yes, thank you. You were last with us about two years ago. Uh, so much has happened, uh, I guess, uh, since the last visit. So uh, I'm going to ask you to first bring the new viewers worldwide now, thanks mm -hmm. to the new network, uh, uh, should we say, bought into uh, life as an artist and a gallery share, if you can, with the folks a little bit about Gary Lucy. Well, I've been painting now for uh, 50 years. I quit my teaching job 50 years ago. I taught uh, elementary art, grades one through six for one year. But uh, I was young, dumb and stupid and didn't know better than to quit a good teaching job to become an artist. 
but uh, I, I it everything worked out well, and, and and I've been able to pay the bills for 50 years and and uh, produce some work. Um, people ask me about my work and so forth, and I don't know really what to say. It's just literally the only thing I've ever done. You see, and uh, uh, you know, art is a uh, Gosh, it's, it, it's everybody's thoughts. I mean, it's what different people think of art one way or another, you see. And, and uh, I'm just very thankful to be able to be in a position to uh, get up in the morning and to go up to the coffee shop and have coffee with the boys and then come home and, and paint pictures. Yes. Now, Gary, you are what we would call a professional artist. Yeah. I know uh, in viewing different ones that people who go to college and um, make a career as you have as an artist, I guess the ones that really don't take it uh, totally 100% are called outsiders, no. which is the, is the term that I've learned. So I guess I fit that category, but mm -hmm. I still enjoy it. been doing the art since I was mm -hmm four or five years old, writing on bedroom walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, so I always admire, shall we say, and blessed to interview uh, the Gary Lucy's of America and worldwide. I had a gentleman, uh, Kansas City Arts Coalition, asked me to interview a gentleman from Latvia about mm -hmm. two years ago. So uh, again, I've visited with, interviewed over 110 artists now since 2016. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just to return to Gary Lucy's studio and hear these words of experience and, uh, should we say, encouragement, inspiration, uh, and, should we say, just to hang on for 50 years and into a gallery and pay the light bill, should we yeah, say. They will. So uh, I, I just uh, thank you so much for, again. Mm -hmm. Well, we're still dealing with the COVID-19 and these different uh, strains. Uh, How has the pandemic affected the gallery and your, your family, if you want to share? Well, uh, last year, I mean, we, the gallery was closed for three or four weeks. And uh, obviously everybody was up in the air and so forth on this issue. Uh, we're back open. Uh, with no problems and uh, the gallery has been doing very well we're very pleased with it we've had a lot of good uh, people are getting out now and they're they're uh, they're happy to be free again and that sort of thing and uh, it, we do see a lot of customers uh, we're open six days a week and we see a lot of people uh, all six days uh, and, you know you we just while ago there was a group in that took the train out to see us and so forth so yes. that was fun right I guess this is a day of the second train or what have you uh, as they make a tour uh, oh yeah train. well we have uh, actually we have train tours they take the train out from St. Louis oh, and uh, come by the gallery and of course our downtown area here in Washington is alive, well, and thriving. Uh, we have down here, I give a commercial for that, yes. uh, we have uh, uh, absolutely beautiful residential housing down here with uh, condominiums <laughs> up in the million dollar category, quite yes. frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, I mean, we, we got restaurants all through down here. We have galleries, art galleries. We have all types of different businesses and so forth through downtown. So uh, Washington downtown and riverfront area is alive and well. Oh, yes, the riverfront area you've got to visit. And we're only half a block away from the riverfront. I like to call Washington, Missouri the, should we say, the um, artist gallery capital of the United States because no. we have such um, uh, great artists that have settled and opened galleries or just uh, live amongst uh, people here mm -hmm. in Washington, Missouri. We've got, uh, for example, Brian Haynes and mm -hmm. a new gallery where Jim Peters, who uh, if you might remember Jim at the Missouri State Fair with his sign painting. Mm -hmm. And so Joanne McCoy, his daughter, has opened uh, a new gallery. It's worth a trip, and you don't want to just stay for an hour. You want to walk the downtown. Uh, 
the restaurants, the galleries, the riverfront. It's just really a vacation in a day, you might say. So yeah. We have a lot of people stopping by like that. They come out on the train, spend the day, and then take the train back into the city, or perhaps stay overnight. We have several really nice, uh, really nice small hotels in our downtown area now. And bread and back breakfast, I believe. Also. Bread and breakfast, uh, and like I say, we have about two really nice small hotels, and uh, 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 people seem to really enjoy taking the time to do that sort yes. of thing. Now, Gary, his last show was, um, he gave us an insight to marketing your art, and uh, Gary is probably the best in the area to um, more or less give you those uh, pointers. So if you'll tune into that previous uh, interview that we had here at the gallery where Gary gave you some insight on marketing the art. And, uh, Gary, I remember, shares with me that they don't teach that at in the de academic level no. at the universities or college. So he had some really good advice. And just looking at the gallery and what we can share today gives you a pretty good example of you might want to open your ears up a little bit more to uh, what Gary uh, has to share with you. Well, Gary, I must uh, take a break. And uh, so we'll be right back uh, with okay. more, uh, covering more insights and sharing by Gary Lucy, the artist. When we come back, um, We'll talk more about Gary Lucy. Stay with us. There's a lot more on Spotlight on the Arts. Talking to your kids about finishing school isn't easy, just necessary. Call 866-ASTUDIA or go to boostup.org for materials that can help. Welcome back to Spotlight on the Arts. I continue my uh, interview with Mr. Gary Lucy, an artist from Washington, Missouri. And we're coming to you from the Gary Lucy Gallery and Studio here in Washington, Missouri. Well, Gary, before the break, you shared a lot of information, so let's continue along those lines of uh, thought. And, uh, if you can, though, um, we just talked a little bit about the new project that you're premiering at uh, the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Do you have any final words on that you'd like to share? Uh, uh, I was, mainly, I was going to ask if we, that'll be on display here in, in the oh, future. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll have it on display here at the gallery. Mm -hmm. We'll okay. probably put it in the window for a while and that sort of thing. Excellent. Well, Gary, we do know that your commission by different uh, should we say, uh, uh, levels of um, need or inspiration from the government, I guess, on down. So mm -hmm. doing commission work, would you like to share your website, uh, your email, phone number, of, and what you would, um, how would you court, categorize? Mm -hmm. Do you have a certain, should we say, subject matter that you sort of stick to if someone is looking well, for a painting? We do have a website, GaryLucy.com, which is very easy to remember, and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> right now, for about the last 35 years, I've been working on a theme called Inland Waterways, the Highways of Our Heritage. And uh, it basically, I have studied, I've traveled the rivers from one end to the other, from one side of the country to the other. Um, when I do my work, I literally read about the history. Yes. And... I like to say it goes in here and it goes round and round and it comes out here. And uh, most historians read and interpret either in a text format or an oral format. I read and interpret in a uh, visual format. Yes. And uh, it, it works very well. I, I've worked 
gosh, I, I, I've worked with many, many different people and so forth. And uh, lots of people writing books about different various forms of history and that sort of thing. And um, I spent about six or seven years with Lewis and Clark. Um, the Lewis and Clark images have been reproduced a little over 265 million times around the world. And, uh, uh, well, there's lots of stories that go along sure. with that, you see. Sure. Uh, but I, I think the pieces uh, have a life of their own. Uh, they have a story. Each one has a, a story in itself. It tells a story. Uh, I was talking to a well, fellow that I work with and, at Southeast at college, and um, he was looking at each one, and he says, "Well, you know, each one of these is kind of its own little master's dissertation, yeah. you know." Right. And uh, uh, they very well could be. I mean, I could stand here with the pieces around the room uh, and, and and tell you a good fifteen or twenty minute story yes. about each one. And we've covered some of those in sure. the past. Mm -hmm. uh, visits, um, the very first and second visit especially, where we describe those paintings. So it's, again, to really get the full picture of the life of Gary Lucy on these walls and these what these paintings are all about. I invite you to tune in to all those programs. That's why I do try to continue on as things happen uh, in Gary's art life, shall we say. Now you talked about in your um, uh, last interview about having a theme. And mm -hmm. so again, a good example, waterways of Missouri. Inland waterways, Inland. the highway. Well, it's a basically, I, I came up on this theme. I, I, I enjoy the rivers and one thing led to another. And I realized that the, the history of the rivers has never really been told in a visual format. Yes. And uh, I've got stories. I mean, I got lifetimes worth of ideas for this sort of thing. Uh, and I encourage other artists, young artists, that uh, if they wanted to start to read about the history of the rivers, uh, the rivers literally prior to the Civil War were the only highways we had in this country. That's right. You mm -hmm. see, and that's why all the major cities we have literally in the world are on rivers, oceans are some type of lake, some type of body of water. Because in order to move large quantities of cargo, uh, you had to be on the water. Because, I mean, obviously, a, a wagon Horse could carry down, maybe 1,500 pounds or something, and that was about it. Yes. Then you throw in four or five inches of rain, and all you got is mud. <laughs> right. And, and you've captured it so well with that. So it's a lesson in itself, uh, a history lesson. Uh, so many things have happened in each individual's life on the waterways. So, mm -hmm. so many stories. So, I can identify with that. So, if you're going to do a commission, it's going to basically deal with uh, history mm -hmm. of Missouri, maybe on the waterways. If you're looking to for a commission work that you can touch, maybe, uh, maybe you would like to have a a, a painting uh, project of a family member that uh, lived on the river, you would like to uh, highlight that in a, in a painting. That's just an idea. Well, I want to thank you, Gary, also for uh, exhibiting a piece in my show sponsored by Spotlight on the Arts, Call for Nature's Art. And so I want to thank you so much for entering uh, the piece, which was well received and quite a conversation. Well, good. Every time I was visiting, we had over uh, uh, 700 visitors run that through in that two month period. So, and we had a possibility of a 110 artists, but we had to cut it off at 52. Well, we've been talking here, I, and I worked for 50 years as an artist. Uh, the first 12 years, uh, I did wildlife art. And uh, uh, I, it, I was very much into the environment and things like that when I was in college. Uh, as a matter of fact, I participated in the very first Earth Day on April the 22nd. And uh, so I was very much into the environment that period of time. And uh, I found that the uh, expressing the positive uh, parts and beauty in nature was 
going very, very well at that time. And uh, there are a lot of people interested in that. So I worked with that for approximately 12, 12 years. But that period of time uh, in the early 80s, uh, the wildlife market really began to wane. Uh, I guess, how many ways can you paint a duck for Pete's sake, <laughs> yes. you know? And uh, a fellow showed up on my doorstep back about, I guess, 80, 81. His name was Lyle Woodcock, and people that are involved with art know the name. Definitely perhaps. know the name. And uh, Lyle, uh, Lyle literally was personal friends and career advisor to Thomas Hart Benton. Yes. And uh, Lyle taught me about the real world of art. What, what it was all about and, and the, the money and, and the people and the collectors and things like that. And uh, he was basically saying uh, that you got to find a theme to work with and so forth. I worked with wildlife art for 12 years and um, I went to him and I said, Lyle, I got to take a different path. I, I, I do something different. And he said, he said, Gary, he says, you will not ever achieve the level that you want unless you work with the human figure in some capacity. Uh -huh. You've got to work with the human figure. And I'm like, well, wow, what am I going to do? You know, and, sure. and, uh, I let, and Lyle's never a guy that gives you an A to Z formula in anything. He's not like that. Uh, so I left there wondering what I was going to do with the human figure. I mean, am I going to do nudes? I mean, I don't think so. People are not going to hang nudes in the living room and things like sure. that. So I got home and uh, got my studio and I started looking out at the river. People love paintings of water. They, that's why they go to the lake and the beaches and things like that. And then people, people, people. And I said, you know, I bet a lot of people went up and down that river right out there. And I bet they really had a tremendous history background. And I had been interested in historic interpretation. Uh -huh. uh, historic interpretation has been around with us for 35,000 years from cave paintings and things sure. like that. So basically speaking, I mean, historic interpretation, for instance, uh, not because of religious things, but because people understand the Last Supper, uh, you know, uh, it was basically completed 1,500 years ago about an event that happened. Yes. I mean, completed... Uh, event 1,500 years ago, about 500 years ago it was completed. Uh, so I started saying history, art, and I, I went to the library and I checked out a half a dozen books on the history of the rivers. And by the time I got through the first 30 or 40 pages, I had some great ideas sure. for some paintings, you see. Uh, so I, I left wildlife art and I thought, oh, I don't know if my patrons will stay with me from one to the other, and of course everybody stayed, it wasn't a problem. And uh, that was about 35 years ago, and uh, I committed myself literally about 83 to have a show in 2004 to correlate with Lewis and Clark. Oh, yes. uh, I, I committed to having a show at the Old Courthouse Museum in St. Louis. Uh, and have a show entitled Inland Waterways, the Highways of Our Heritage, oh, you see. The beginning, see. So uh, basically, uh, uh, each piece right here has its own little story, and uh, uh, it's something that I've put together for some period of time. Excellent. Well, Mr. Lucy, I want to thank you once again for contributing to Spotlight on the Arts. And it's been really uh, an inspiring to visit with you once again, and also an informational experience. Uh, for everyone, I'm sure. So thanks uh, for a reveal also of your newest painting dealing with the law enforcement in Missouri back in the 1800s. So Indeed. I want to thank you so much. Once well, you're quite welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Well, that wraps up another Spotlight on the Arts right here uh, coming to you from Washington, Missouri. Thank you, the viewers, for joining me and Mr. Lucy today. Spotlights on the Spotlight on the Arts is now on my channel, YouTube, Rick J, and other uh, channels within the Apple TV, um, Amazon Fire, Roku, and uh, on down the line as we spread out through an international channel 
reaching people from all over the world. So, Rick J saying, thanks again. I'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>